Hello and welcome to another episode with myself, Alex, and... And Peter. How's it going, folks? And today, we're bringing you a review. Finally, finally, finally. Alex, how many more times can I say finally? Finally, finally. I just said it two more times, so that's enough. <laughs> we are going to review... Grand Theft Auto Grand Theft Auto 5 for you kind folks. It was probably the most anticipated game of this year. Oh yeah, even though, you know, Bioshock Infinite and The Last of Us also came out this year, I, I think it's safe to say that, yeah, this was this was the big one. This game has broken record sales across the board, beating Grand of Call of Duty, thank God for that, in my yeah. book. And um, so, yeah. with all the hype behind it and the expectations that Rockstar has... Yeah, I think it's about time that we actually talked about the content of the game because we were delaying this review for a while we both wanted to finish up the uh the story of the game the main sort of the main story mode mm -hmm. of the game before we actually sat down and discussed it in length but now we both have so played it we and i'm are playing it a second good time to go. actually really <laughs> yes god damn i'm playing it again yeah but on, from my opinion i loved this game it was what I had hoped for. Mostly. Um, so the three characters, what did you... I th enjoyed having the three character split. I was worried at how that was going to work. If the characters would be diluted or weak. Because they were doing three characters instead of one. But I thought it worked actually very well. Yeah, I was very surprised by it. Since this was... I, thi I think this was the biggest uh, gameplay change from past Grand Theft Autos. The introduction of three protagonists yeah. and yeah it absolutely worked perfectly because rockstar really paid attention to all three characters they each gave they all three guys um excuse me uh michael franklin and trevor mm -hmm. they all have their own personalities they all have their own backstories they all have their you know their own motivations and their and just generally their own reasons for and doing what they do and I think that was really what managed to make it work, in yeah. my eyes. And also, the, what was, I thought, very, even more impressive was how well the three characters interacted, how natural it felt. Because the dialogue, all the cutscene dialogue is spectacular, as is the voice acting by all three of them. And how, just how different each character is, and also how different, each, different the game, kind of almost how different the gameplay is with each character, in a way. Oh, yeah. Because all their skill sets are quite different. Yeah, that's true. And, that, and you can eventually bump up all their stats. I think that's another new feature in Grand Theft Auto Yeah, the stats. Five, and I yeah. liked the stats. It means they're not just a badass shooter since day one. Which I kind of liked. It made the game uh, more difficult and more challenging. Yeah, also, it also helped give each character their own unique personalities. For example, uh, Michael is a veteran uh, criminal. You know, oh, he's, he's he's seen his fair share of scraps and fights, so he's the old school criminal. As yeah, I like so to he's think so his weapons handling is incredibly high. I think it's I the think highest. when you start off the game, no, it's definitely the highest. But I think when you start off the game, it's almost maxed out. While Fra <coughs> Franklin <laughs> is oh, a um, gangbanger from basically South Los Santos or basically South LA. But yeah, so so Franklin is an up and an up-and-coming gangster in the underworld, so... Who's trying know. to avoid crime, but gets sucked into it. Kind of has the most similarity to the Nico story from yeah. Grand Theft Auto 4, I think. That's true, but yeah, so... But when you start off as him, he's not as experienced as Michael, so... You know, his fighting prow prowess isn't nearly as high as... Uh, as Michael or Trevor's, but he's an incredible driver, you know, because when you first start off the game, he's actually a repo man. Mm -hmm. So he has the driving, the highest driving skill out of any character, and Trevor was a form, Trevor was a former pilot in the Canadian Air Force, I think, so he's the best pilot of the group. I think it was at the U.S. Air Force, I think. He, I think he was from, was he's it from US Canada. The, well, he was from Canada, or he was from the Canada-U.S. border. It's not really yeah. clear where. I mean, they talk, they talk about in the game how he has a how he has a Canadian accent. Yeah, they do. So, so he's probably maybe Canadian Air Force and Yeah, so I, I, I yeah, I just assumed that it was Canadian Air Force. But anyway, so he was he's a trained pilot. And he was Michael's old partner. Yeah. 
But yeah, Trevor was a trained pilot, so he has the best uh, flying, flying skills. Flying skills, and that's pretty much how the game works. Where it's not just um, it's not just their uh, personality that makes each character feel unique and special, but it's also the actual. Uh, I guess you can say in-game elements, and maybe you can find a better way to phrase this, Alex, but it's the in-game elements and the actual gameplay mechanics for each character that also makes them feel unique. So you really do feel it, you know, every time you uh, you bounce between th th the three characters, not just visually, but also... Uh, kind of style. Kind of, uh, style. Stylist stylistically. St stylistically or mechanically. And um, each of them have very, and their personalities each have depth. Like Michael, and they ha and they each deal with their unique problems. It's not just criminal running from cops problems like in previous Grand Theft Auto games. Everyone's problems have been the same for each Grand Theft Auto game, but they also deal with normal life. They kind of, like Michael deals with the most dysfunctional Rockford Hills, Beverly Hills family, and a lot of it is actually based on very uncomfortable truths. Yeah. But you know, the great thing about uh, Michael's family dynamic is, especially as you get to the end of the game, mm -hmm. you're still rooting for them, you know, because, and it really does, and it does go through, and sort of the strain with all the characters in Grand Theft Auto, at least the, the, the protagonists, where they all kind of suck, but they're all trying to better themselves, mm -hmm. so at the end of the day, you want to root for them. Yeah, and um, what I also I liked about Grand Theft Auto, what impressed me was how all not how well also how kind of in depth the minor characters were to a certain extent and how the relationship between the characters changes over the story it's kind of a the dynamic changes the kind of the situation continuously changes it's not about just a, the story is not a straight line like within grand, the grand theft auto 4 is nico just going to the top it was the story was pretty straight and in one direction but this story goes off in many different directions and there's many different, um, many different problems that all the characters faced. And, and I thought that just kind of just made, ever give everything more complexity and depth. Now, do you have a favorite character? Everyone always will ask what your favorite character is. I don't know, I actually want to go back to the point you made. Yeah, <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, sorry. The point you made about, um, the side characters, because I actually... I don't want to get into the things I didn't like about the game yet, but I actually felt kind of the opposite about that, where I didn't think that there was a whole lot going on with the side characters, but to me, I mean, they were well written, they were, they had their own charm and, such, and stuff, but for me it really felt like that they were just there to give you missions. That's true. And really true. all of the, all of the uh, development and progress and progression was going on with your three main protagonists, but yeah. that, that's really about it. What I meant by depth is they added, they basically weren't just like, they didn't felt like disconnected from the game. Like, um, I thought the problem with Grand Theft Auto 4 was that all the characters you met just kind of felt disconnected, like Packy, like all of Nico's friends, but I thought the other the minor characters really added to the game instead of disconnecting you from it. That's what okay. I meant by depth. Alright. Because right. kind of how they kind of they're not explored more, but they feel like they're really part of the story, not just a separate outsider. Which I thought was a great improvement over the friends. And you also, there is the hanging out with friends option. They talked about, before the game came out, not having yeah. to do... Wait, did you ever hang out with anyone in Grand Theft Auto V once? Actually, I did a couple times. Okay, yeah, I did. Because actually, <coughs> you didn't? I did not. Oh, I did. And it was actually kind of... Of course, it's kind of dull because you, but they made the hanging out with friends less annoying. You don't actually have to do it, but there's interesting dialogue. If you do it sporadically throughout the game, you see how, when they're hanging out, they t what they talk about and kind of gives a depth to their relationships between the characters. Okay. So, I actually found it interesting, but it's so, it's short enough to the point where it doesn't really get in the way. Like, right. I ended up... Because there are many act there are many activities like in Grand Theft Auto 4, but there there's only a few. There isn't as many. There's um golf. There's a golf mini game and a tennis mini game, which I only did one time. And then there's drinking, which you go in, some time passes, you go back out, they have a drunk conversation, you drive back, and you can do that in about a span of five minutes. Okay, yeah, I was too busy robbing liquor stores. Oh, uh, robbing liquor stores. <laughs> 
I, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I really lived out whatever thug life fantasies. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, there are lots of where you can rob stuff. There's lots of there's also security vans which I continuously robbed all the time the moment I could get Oh yeah. Sticky bombs is like boom, robbing the vans. Yeah. And some of the they're actually the random events are actually interesting. I like that better than the because I feel like they replaced the friend hangout with random events and some of them were really cool. There was one I found that was actually there were ref, and they actually are references. There was one reference to No Country for Old Men. Really? What I was found it? it in the, one of the mountains that there was a bunch of trucks and dead gangsters on the floor, and then there was a briefcase of cash. And then after, when you picked it up, I picked it up as Michael, and then more gangsters came and attacked me. That's so there was awesome. a No Country for Old Men <laughs> reference, which I found to be. And speaking of references, I wanted this is a point I've wanted to get to since we started this reveal: the the commentary in the game, the political commentary, which I have always found to be love about Grand Theft Auto. I don't know how much of it you picked up, but the commentary is even more blunt. Is more blunt than it was in the previous game, and I found it to be interesting. I once I don't know if you did this in the game, but I spent watching the fake television in a video game. It was actually uh, no, I did you not. You didn't? Oh, I did. I play video games, so I don't have to oh. watch TV. I know, but I thought it was there was a parody of the Republican Space Rangers, <laughs> and there was um, there was like the. The fake internet was that not cool? There's a huge parody of Facebook. Facebook yeah. gets ripped on in this game. Life Invader, called I Life think Invader. that's what it's called. And I'm gonna say that the mission where you basically kill Mark Zuckerberg. You basically murder Mark Zuckerberg in the video that game. Was a, that was a fun mission. That like might have been one of my, even though it wasn't the most action-packed, it might have been one of my favorite missions in the game. <laughs> And and the and then it, you go into the parody of Facebook, and it's basically a giant rip on hipsters. There's a lot of like just um, pop culture references in this game. There's a fake Twitter too. I don't know if you noticed that. I did not notice it. I did not do anything online except to buy stocks for uh, for uh, com for various companies that I, for which I was altering the market in a significant way. Yep. That was really the extent of my uh, GTA. Five online oh. venturing. Yeah, the stock. I thought. What did you think of the stock market? That's kind of the newest mini feature that they put in. I mean, my problem with that is, yeah, it's interesting and it's and it's impressive how well it works. But who the who the hell wants to play the freaking stock market in Grand Theft Auto? A lot of people. I looked oh. online. There are articles of how to about how to do the stock market in a video game. That people people will have seen more articles about the fake this fake stock market than the real one. It's actually kind of hilarious. Yeah, that own, absolutely right. baffled me. You know, even with all the mini games and stuff, where you you know you can play golf and see that you can play tennis and whatnot or skydive. And while that's interesting and all of them helps create a more uh, immersive world, this is also a, a game world in which you rob banks for millions of dollars yeah and you know i that's cool and all if you like it that's fine but i'm sorry i i don't understand why anyone would want to play the stock market no. over robbing a bank yeah and um now i'm just one and i think i want to get to some um i loved this game but there were a couple things that really dis that i kind of was annoyed by one of them was in the i felt like the lack of heists in the movie I mean, in the video games. Movie. That's true. I feel like if they could have created a, created, uh, included more heists or created a system in which you could do random heists, mm -hmm. I guess where, you know, just pop up on the map and you could piece together a crew or something and, yeah. and perform a heist. Because heist those really were the most entertaining parts of the game. Well, all the heists. Yeah, the heists were the best part of the entire game. Which I think they say for Grand Theft Auto Online, which I did a little bit of it, so I will talk. I don't know if you played Grand Theft Auto Online. Um, I don't have Xbox Live Gold, so yeah. I didn't get to check I it out. I played it a little bit, and honestly, I did hate it. I was bored. It was kind of the same. It was exactly like Red Dead Redemption Online, if you remember it, with the free roam and stuff. Okay, so you just run around the map and do Kill everybody. stuff. And everybody yeah. basically, like, you can race against people, but basically... If you're not with five Xbox Live friends, you're just gonna get camped and trolled, and basically, no one works to- Everyone behaves like they do on an online game, which everyone's an asshole to everybody. 
And I felt like, and that's what worries me, is I'm afraid they're going into the Xbox Live direction for Grand Theft Auto, and that kind of, that makes me just minorly concerned about the future that the single player is going to start to get weakened. It ha it was the single player was strong in Grand Theft Auto 5, but this is a concern that popped into my head when I thought about it. And uh, I liked how there were many there were the different approaches to a heist too. Yeah, that was definitely a nice uh, change of pace. Pace yeah, for I think for every single heist there's always sure. there's an alternative. Yeah. yeah. And I thought it just made it very interesting. And they're in there, and it kind of just made two different. It made different styles of the game. And honestly, I thought that um, the, the each character had a different style of gameplay. Like Trevor, honestly, reminded me of a Saints Row game. Yeah, Trevor Phillips. I, you know, I would not even want to be in the same state as that <laughs> man. Honestly, he. I don't know if he might be the most interesting character. Yeah. Because you know, I don't want to get into it, but. Because I don't want to spoil it, but he's actually a very, very tragic character. Yeah, he is. He is kind of... A but yeah, no spoilers, but yeah, Trevor is more than a psychopath. Yeah, there's a... Actually, I think he had, there's the more... There's almost a more complex... I think he might be the most complex character compared to the other two. And yeah, the voice... Act, and yeah, all the... And also, I think of minor characters, the most hilarious... Um, I thought the two most hilarious characters were Jimmy or Michael's son Jimmy, who they basically they make fun of video games in this movie, yeah. in this video game. Yeah, Jimmy is pretty much their way of poking fun at uh, at their audience. Yep, <laughs> which I liked too, and um, this kind of the funny uh, video game playing stoner that's in the game, and uh, I liked. Uh, yeah, just I thought that was just a so interesting touch. We spent, we've spent about 15 minutes talking about a bunch of the things we liked about this game. Um, do you want to talk about some of the... Actually, you know what? There are a couple more uh, positive things I want to say. First of all, yeah. the world. The size, scale, and scope of the world they created is unbelievable. The, every, all the minor details they put into it, you know... Just driving around Los Santos and as an LA kid recognizing various landmarks, like I'm not sure if you do it, if you notice, but in South Los Santos they actually have a stru they actually have a structure that's similar to the Watts Tower. Yeah, I noticed Watts. that. I th th I thought that was an amazing detail they put in. Also, uh, the, the also Santa the, Monica Pier. Yeah, they have they the have Santa a rendition Monica of the Pier. Santa Monica Pier. And of the beach, Santa Monica Beach, too. And also uh, the PCH. They've got... Uh, the Yellow Venice. Stairs. Did you see the Yellow Stairs? I did. That's a parody. Yeah. Also uh, Venice Beach. They also have those uh, famous steps in yeah. Beverly Hills. Yeah, they do. I mean, there's... They have a huge par the huge rendition of the Beverly Hills City Hall, too. Yeah, I mean, there's they just inserted so much detail and effort into the game that, that I just have to... I have to give them credit for that. It's the most detailed open world that I yeah, think I've ever easily. seen. Easily. You know what? It's the best open world in any video game ever. And yeah. It's set... It, basically, Grand Theft Auto V has now set the new standard for an open yeah. world. So pretty much the next gen... All the developers for next gen consoles really have to step it up now. Also, and, I feel like... Also, they improved the, the overall combat with this game big time. Yeah, the, they had an auto-targeting system like Grand Theft Auto 4, but it was so much easier to use and to navigate between people you want you were shooting at. So I'm glad they took the gun system, I think, for Red Dead Redemption, which I was very happy that they did that. Yeah, and they also, they also improved uh, driving. The, the driving mechanic is infinitely better. Yeah. You can actually do sharp turns without your car rolling over. Yeah, or with Nick, or without your character flying through the windshield. Oh. <laughs> so really, what I have to say is, on a on a technical level, this is one of the best games ever. They absolutely knocked it out of the park on every uh, every graph, every uh, visual detail, every uh, mechanical detail. You name it. It's it's, the... it's on. It's unreal. It's it the really perfect is. last, it's kind of, this Grand Theft Auto V is like the last big game for the 360, and it, I think it's the perfect home 360 touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, this is really, yeah, this is the final big game that's, 
that's coming out exclusively for um, the current generation of consoles. You know, uh, there are a bunch of big games that are coming out for, you know, the Xbox 360 and PS3 and generation, but they're also, but they're all, but they're focusing more on um, the next generation, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. So this is really the, the bookend of this console generation. And goddamn, what a way to go. What a way to go. And also, if this is what is the capable on a 360 on this generation, next generation, I'm expecting and I it to have even better. And I think that um, the studios now with this game and seeing how much money it made, I think the pressure on them to make a better game is going to be up there. Oh, yeah. And I think what this game, I think, and I may be sound, sounding over dramatic here, but I think that it has set it has set a new level of expectation of what is possible that what i'm hoping for maybe i'm overly optimistic is now that ga that now that developers are not going to be able to cheap on their gameplays anymore I, I hope not but after all of the praise we just loved that we just put onto the game do you want to talk about some of the things that didn't work for you okay some of the things that didn't work um what well we talked about the heist there are very few of them and they're making money outside of the heist, which, you know, in Grand Theft Auto 4, there are always ways to make money outside of doing missions. And, um, I thought that kind of was a disappointment. And, um, also that so many, you, most of the missions you actually don't get money from, which I found, I, which I kind of, which kind of irritated me a bit. And, um, the one thing that irritated me was the property system. The property system annoyed me. That was my yeah. one big. Yeah, I didn't really care for, for um the real for applying the real estate market either all that much. Pretty much, if it didn't involve robbing banks, I don't think I was all that in interested. Mm -hmm. It kind of was almost. It seemed like it was put down on as an afterthought. So and that kind of just. There was no point in buying properties because getting money back was just took so yeah, it long. It took way too long. We're pretty much in the game. If you buy a property, you have a fixed weekly income. Or you get but money you have per to... action. Or like per there's action. a towing okay. impound where you get five hundred dollars per tow car. But you get five hundred dollars per tow car, but the property costs a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I mean, do the math. Like that's just not worth it. It's pretty bogus. And also you have to it's all in-game, so it's a, an in-game week, which it's is not, really long. It, which is really long, but it's not an actual week. But yeah, so that kind of sucks. So you're not going to see a return on your investment all too often, unless you just, you know, leave your Xbox on all the time. <laughs> and um, I, I think though, though I dislike the property system, I'm, I will play devil's advocate and say. I think there's, it's a, I felt like it was a testing concept that Rockstar came up with because it seemed kind of not well developed. And I think a property idea in Grand, future Grand Theft Auto games could work, but I thought this was just kind of an unneeded add-on and not really a huge deal. And also not being able to buy properties, which you could do online, not being able to do it in single player also irritated me. So one problem I had with the game that actually went away pretty quickly is, it, and this isn't only a, a problem with uh, Grand Theft Auto V, but I actually find this in a lot of open world games or pretty much any large, expansive, long game, but it, it, it starts off kind of slow. Yeah. Okay. I thought, you know, I think Grand Theft Auto V pick, did not start as slow as 4 did. I thought they improved on that, I but it did start you. off slow. Yeah, it's just something about open, about big open world games, you know, that I, that I find with any, with all, with all of them actually, you know, like Far Cry 3 and Skyrim, you name it, it's the same problem that occurs, and I think it's because there are just so many different gameplay mechanics that you have to, Take time that to... you have to, uh, get your grips on, that it takes forever to introduce all of them to. So that's, that's a minor point, but I guess it's more of a warning for anyone who hasn't gotten the game yet i don't know who you are because they've made more than a billion dollars so a fuck and a ton of people have bought this game yep and it did better than made more money than call of duty which makes me happy and i think why it makes me happy because it proves that 
you, you, there can be a successful single player game because single player really is still the main thing in this game. Even though there's a multiplayer, and there was one in Grand Theft Auto 4. I never played it, but there was one. And I think this, I hope this proves that you don't need an Xbox Live in a game just for it to be successful. So, and I think that's, that's at least hopeful for me since I'm not an Xbox Live fan on a personal level. Um, another, I guess another nitpick I have with the game is, is also there are so many different uh, quest points in the game that it can be kind of hard to tell what's the main story and what's not just some random uh, di diversion or side quest, which I think it would have been nice if they had an, in had an indicator that said this is, you know, the main story. This is yeah, the main plot. This, this Just something to distinguish it from the from well, the rest of the Well, missions. they had a question mark for the strangers and yeah, freaks. Yeah, for the one. strangers and freaks. Which are basically the side quests. But I mean, you'll see something like um, that just says M on Michael's house. What is it? Who knows? And then you go there and it's just, you know, you going to the beach with your kids. Michael doing random stuff. Yeah, so that, so that was something that kind of bothered me, but not a whole lot where I felt... Where I felt like, oh, well that works, but I think what would have been better is if they did this instead of that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, so that's just a minor nitpick. Um, another problem I had with the game has to do with the humor sometimes. Where there were a couple of times where it just got old and obnoxious where, I don't know about you Alex, but growing up on a steady diet of shows like South Park and mm -hmm. I guess uh, Family Guy and yeah. Adventure Brothers and Adult Swim we've heard we've heard all the poop jokes yeah we have we've heard we've heard all the poop jokes I thought about this and said there's got to be a poop joke out there that I haven't heard we have. I can't think of one I haven't heard one so just for for a game that's so brilliantly made and for them to resort to humor like poop jokes at times really right. disappointing and me. also this game is takes on some really dark topics there's a there's some very graphic things in the game which i'm not really like i'm not really like sensitive to that but there were a couple of times where even i was like oh wow there's one particular scene the uh scene i guess i'm spoiling this right here but the scene with trevor oh the um yes okay i think i know that you know that one Trevor, um, and, uh, the Trevor and Hane scene in that room. Yeah, that was, let's not spoil it. I won't spoil but it, I but... I think our viewers, or I think our listeners know what know we're, what talking, we're talking, about. talking about. And that's even graphic, even by, I think, Grand Theft Auto standards. And I think they're... This game is taking a lot more risks about stuff and being more... more yeah. co controversial, I think. Yeah, I think, I think it had a point in the game. I don't want to go into it because... I think it was making a very... It was making a political point. Yeah. And it actually makes a very... I read, I read an article about that scene where they actually made made the case where it's actually a very good piece of satire and it's a great article, but I don't want to go into it because it spoils the yeah. scene. Yeah, this game... Yeah, most games with game ratings... I'm just gonna... I don't know if this is, there's a point to this, but I'll put it out there that most games are in the rated T and rated M. It's kind of like flimsy, but this... Rockstar makes an M game an M game. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, seriously, you... Yeah, don't... Not for if, children. If you have kids that are younger than, like, I don't know. Pretty much if they can't buy the game themselves. Yeah, then... No. Then, um... Be warned that this is really... This is really an M game. Yeah. I mean, those people don't take those ratings off really that seriously, I think, but... This is the first really, truly rated M game that I've seen. Like, I'm surprised it didn't get... No, very few games have gotten an A rating. I'm surprised this game didn't get one. Yeah, well, there wasn't a whole lot of nudity in the game, so. Oh, there wasn't a whole lot of nudity. But... There, there was more, though, when I did what, I did a friend thing with the strip club. Okay. But, yeah, you know, going back to the topic of humor, it was kind of disappointing when there were those weaker... When they resorted to pretty juvenile moments like that. Oh, yeah. That were... Where I don't know if they were trying... Because I, I'm sure you know this about me, but one of the things I hate more than anything in the world, at oh. least when it comes to entertainment, is... Poop jokes. I hate poop jokes. No, not just poop jokes, but whenever something intentionally tries to shock you for 
shock value. That's always an, that's always annoyed me because it seems it seems pointless. Yeah, it's true. You must have really not liked Borat then. <laughs> I I thought Borat was okay. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Shock value should shock value sake is just usually just not irritating. It's just kind of dull. But um. But. Yeah. I think that um. That's just kind. Of, yeah, and I think that. I had a thought. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, I well, I don't know. Maybe we're going on the same page. But I was also a bit surprised by the lack of any uh, female characters. I know this has been a big topic, but in, you know, in the in the media about Grand Theft Auto 5, but it was... Yeah, they accused it of it being misogynistic. It was a, misogynistic, and I'm not sure if it is, but it is surprising that every single female character in the game is an awful, horrible harpy. Yeah, they really are. All, all the female characters are really terrible. Yeah, and I mean every single like Michael's one. wife is kind. Is basically is portrayed as being kind of a bitch. Yeah, and you know what? That's more of um, I guess that's more of a cultural critique of the game. It's not about anything that the game does on a technical level. Yeah, but that was, that was one of those, all for a game that's so well crafted. What's going on? And I know that uh, Dan Hauser, the the writer and creator of Grand Theft Auto. So that it that there weren't any female protagonists in the game because it was about because the game was about masculinity, and while that's true, it is it is pretty strange though that there is such a lack of care and attention paid to the the female uh, characters in the game. I feel yeah, it's true, but I feel like that's always kind of been the case of Grand Theft Auto. It's been accused of being misogynistic before. I mean, it's this been, hasn't been this isn't like a yeah. it's not a new critique. I think it's the critique's always been there. Yeah, that's true and you know, and it was it was kind of the same case in uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, 4, but you also had um I can't remember her name, but it was Packy's so? sister. Oh, Kate. Kate. Yeah. Yeah, where she was where she seemed like an actual, you know, a human being. Yeah. She was like the only morally good character I think that's ever existed in a Grand Theft Auto game. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm not, I, I don't think anyone's asking for, you know, an angel or a saint out of a female protagonist, but just, just a bit more. Yeah. And substance I th given I to them. I think why they did that though is, th this. Is, what's I think different about these main characters is that in previous games, even though the characters are like criminals and hoods, they're kind of portrayed with a moral, kind of a moral compass of somewhat. Like Nico, he's kind of supposed to be, he's kind of more portrayed, I think, as an anti hero. Where, like, I think these three characters are just generally bad guys. Like, they're just not good people, really. All three of them are. Like, you just would, like, if you met any of these three characters and, like, you would not like Franklin and Michael if you ever met somebody like them in yeah. life. And you would never want to get near Trevor yeah. with a 10-foot pole. Once again, you wouldn't want to be in the same state as Trevor Phillips. Yeah, Trevor, honestly, when I first, I was playing the game and uh, I was with, and my, when I first saw Trevor, I was like, this is the joke. It was like, this is the Joker. Yeah, he is the Joker. He is the Joker. He is the real-life version of the Joker. He's actually more scary than the Joker. Of uh, I found an article and I wish I had brought it of the Joker from D um, Dark Knight Rises versus Trevor Phillips, who would win in a fight. I think Trevor Phillips I think Trevor would, would fuck start... up the Joker. Yeah, that Joker would start crying. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and you know, just thinking about the whole uh, lack of uh, any development for the female protect for uh, female characters, I think it might also have to do with the fact that. The game is very cynical, and pretty much everyone in that game is a piece of shit, so it's kind of... I guess you could argue that there's some equality there, sort of, in a way. In a way, because everyone is an asshole in this game. It's just, everyone is unlikable, but you, even though they're all, like, evil people, you kind of still weirdly like them in a way. Yeah, you root for them in some ways, but just going to that back to that point, I still think it is kind of strange that, um... The lack of the lack of any characterization for the female characters. You know, I I read it in an article, and then as I noticed it in the game, that yeah, you know, 
all of these women are a bunch of basic bitches. Every goddamn one of them. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of... Especially a, a Michael's wife in the game, Amanda. Yeah. yeah and so I think that, that was a critique of... That was, I think, the Amanda and the daughter Tracy, I thought... I actually thought it was... I actually liked their characters, because I thought they were very... Because I think I always pay attention to the political stuff in, a, in Grand Theft Auto, because... I'm interested in that, and I notice it. There are a critique, I think, of what Beverly Hills... Because Rockford Hills is a parody of Beverly Hills. It's a parody of kind of the Beverly Hills culture. Yeah, unfortunately, we have encountered people like, like that. Yeah, like the people you see in Grand Theft Auto, they actually are based on real people, which is very unfortunate, but very true. And I think Rockstar did that that way. Yeah. So, we've said the good. We've said we've the said bad. The bad. Um, as about we dish out some ratings. Um, I want to dish this out into, I'm going to say a 9.5 out of 10. Wait, wait, are we, okay, we have to figure this out. Are oh, wait, we going we with the 10 to... point scale or the 5 point scale? Um, it's up to you. Do it. Yeah. We've I don't know, I've always... We'll do I've a 10 always... point scale, because I think people yeah, do I don't know, I've always liked the 5 point scale more than the 10 point, because it's like, one, you know, it's crap, two... It's decent, three middle of the road, four yeah. it's good, five perfect. So I don't know. I, I've always preferred the five point scale. Oh whoa. Uh oh. Cough car following ambulance. Yeah, that's not good. That's never good. Okay. Anyway, where were we? Uh five point scale? Yeah, sorry about that. Car chats. There'll be interruptions because we're in a car in LA. You see everything here. <laughs> All kinds of shit. All kinds of shit. Like, we, we were, uh, this is, I'll give you, there's, um, I think, uh, Peter will post this picture up on the web, are you gonna post it up on the website later? Um, yeah, so don't spoil it. Oh, shit, you know what, I also have to, uh, <laughs> post up the pictures we took from our last, uh, recording session, but yeah. anyway, that's, uh, off topic, uh, so what well, was your to rating? The, the rating. I'm gonna, I guess I'll do it out of the 10 scale, because I guess people know the 10 scale more. I'd say about, i give it, like, a 9, I don't know, I'm debating whether I should give it a 9.5 or a 10. Go with your gut. Um, I would, I, you know what, I'm going to say, basically, a 9.8 out of 10. 9.8. It's basically, it, to me, it's, there are a few things that annoyed me, but it's basically probably the best game of this year. If you haven't played it, which I'm sure is probably none of you, or maybe just, two, like, 0.01% of you, if you haven't played it, if you're one of those people, stop what you're doing, go to the go to the nearest video game store, buy a copy, and play it right now. Okay. As soon as this review is over. Alright, well, I'm I'm gonna go with the five point scale because the score I'm going to give translates perfectly to the ten point scale as well. And, you, you know, I just like the five-point scale a bit more, but we, we'll figure this shit out later. Yeah. But I'm going to give this game a 5 out of 5, or as a 10 out of 10, if you prefer the 10-point scale. That's right, folks, I'm giving this game a perfect score, because on a technical level, this is on... I think you could make the case that this is the most well-made video game ever. I agree. I it's think the you best could, open world ever by a mile. But by a mile and a half, it, yeah. I mean, dude, fuck it. For forget about, dude, forget about a mile. You know, if I thought that Skyrim, uh, that the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim had the best uh, and most fully realized open world in video game dumb. If the Elder Scrolls is, I don't know, way far away from us, say New York, then Grand Theft Auto V is on the fucking moon. Exactly. That's how good it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have some... I had some minor critiques with the game, as I pointed out. You know, it's a couple of more cultural critiques. But if you'll notice, I didn't really have a whole... I didn't really find a whole lot of fault with the the mechanic, the mechanics of the game. Because it really is the... I'm telling you, I think it's the most well-designed game out there. So I absolutely and have to give this game a perfect score on whatever scale you want to use and, it. And uh, we hope that a new standard will be set and more games in the future, because more, more high-quality games is what we all want, I think. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, this is... This really is a very, very special game. That if you're... If you're curious about gaming, or if you are a gamer, you know, if you're a gamer, you probably already own it. But it's absolutely worth spending the $60 for it. And that's what I did, and what, that is something I rarely do. You know, I usually wait until the game drops in price to, you know, the $30 mark when it's so on sale. I. But yeah, this is a game where it has so much content, and everything in the game is so well realized, that you're going to get weeks out of... You're going to get weeks out of this game if you just stick to uh, the main story in this game. And if you want to explore the world and play the game online with your friends, you probably won't need to buy another video game. Oh, very, very For a long. very, very long time. It, It's that good. Yes. I could have said that better. And uh, this has been our review for Grand Theft Auto V. I'm Alex. And I'm Peter. I hope you end up uh, getting this game, and I hope that you enjoy it as much as we did. Enjoy the game as much as we did, and that you enjoy all of the great content that we're making. All right, thank you.